Hello, welcome everybody to the course on dynamics and control. My name is Pedro Albertos from the Polytechnic University of Valencia in Spain. And the topic of today we will follow the control benefits. In particular, we are going to uh, have a look at the future uh, uh, about the new uh, applications uh, of the control. Then uh, this is the framework of uh, our course. We are in the fifth uh, module, control uh, benefits. And then uh, today we are going to deal uh, with the last uh, session on, on this. We will try to summarize some of the many, many benefits that we can get uh, from uh, control. Uh, use, uh, we saw in the previous sessions that uh, the control can be used for many purposes, to uh, deal with unstable plans, to improve the performance, and also to develop uh, new applications. Some applications that uh, couldn't be uh, developed if the control was not, uh, were not implemented. So in these new applications we will see that we st started from analog controllers and we are going to distributed and networked control. We will see some integrated control applications and bio-inspired uh, applications. And we will see new areas of applications and also new challenges uh, in which, uh, which, which should, should be taken into account to develop uh, these new applications. So the classical control structure is uh, like, like uh, is uh, shown here in this uh, slide. You uh, see a basic uh, control loop with the controller, the process, the actuators, the sensors, and this controller can be a human, an operator, or it can be an analog device, or it could be in a, a computer uh, information processing device. And also the actuators and the, the controller can be implemented as uh, computing devices or physical systems. And the information is attached to uh, each loop. So there is a point-to-point -point connection. The process is sending the information to the sensors, the sensors to the controller, the controller to the actuators, the actuator to the process. So it's a point-to-point -point, uh, connection. So we can summarize this saying that in the classical control scenarios, we have a model-based control. We are designing the control based on the model of the process. There is a closed-loop control. There is one single processor or one single controller. And there is a simple and single control goal. And the data belong to the control loop. So it's, as I mentioned, point-to-point -point connection. And we are going to new scenarios where we will have a collaborative control. We will have an embedded control. We will have a network, network uh, based uh, control, event based control, more than regular control, and the data are shared between uh, different users. That means that the controller will disappear, and instead of that, we will have a pervasive uh, network of sensors, controllers, and actuators connected to not just one process, but to many processes. And it will be a decision system that will select which action is the most appropriate to the process at any time instant. So if we look at the network systems, we can summarize that there is a situation like this. We have the process and the actuator and sensors that can be locally connected, like here, but also this process is receiving some information from the network, from sensors which are located far away, and also control actions which are located far away, and all this is transmitted through the network. <coughs> uh, this is one example of this kind of applications, what is called the platforms of cars. You can see here, the, in the first uh, picture here, two cars, one is following the second one, and of course both, but mainly the second one is without a driver, and is just following the, the uh, track, uh, the, the running of the first one. And here is uh, another e example where there is a platform from the, uh, this is the leader and all of them are following uh, and as you can see if you compare with a classical highway the space is much more efficiently used here than here. Uh, of course the, this uh, needs a lot of control and communications between all the uh, cars. We can uh, assume also embedded control systems, when the overall system will operate across many different modes. And 
the communication network must handle a variety of uh, protocols and data. And some parts of the system may fail and then the functionality must be guaranteed and the degradation of performance should be uh, graceful. I mean that uh, we should avoid any disaster. <coughs> we must uh, schedule the use of the available power and other resources like, like memory, computing and so on. And because the resources are shared by many tasks, many control loops. And we should adapt and learn according to the environment conditions. And we mainly should maintain the security and the safety and the system should be allowed to grow, to expand, even to contract, yes, to meet the demand. We have seen a typical example this, uh, of the car, where we have many control units. Uh, you can see here, seat control unit, ele electronic brake system, uh, cruise control, navigation system, sunroof uh, control unit. All these units operate locally, but they share many data with uh, the other control units, and all this, of course, is controlled by the central uh, control unit or in mm, many cases by the driver itself. <coughs> Another uh, new idea is what is called the cyber physical systems. What is that? So uh, systems which are typically designed as a network of uh, embedded sensors and actuators uh, equipped with uh, computing and communicating <laughs> capabilities with physical input and output instead of uh, as standalone devices interacting with physical entities. There is a tight integration between computation, communication and controls. Uh, even each individual device uh, can do something, in, in general is uh, fairly inept uh, at monitoring or regulating the physical substratum. And then is the coordination of all the individual uh, elements in the node, uh, which has the potential uh, to provide unprecedented uh, capabilities. <coughs> uh, you see that these kind of systems are very complex and they cannot be exhaustively tested. Then uh, we must ensure, as we said before, that the system is robust and uh, safe enough uh, to prevent any failure or to adapt to the uh, environmental changes. <coughs> you can see here a typical example of uh, uh, the whole idea of having a, an instrument to help you to read, but nowadays this is a reality. You know the um, Google uh, glasses that allow you to have a, a interaction with the environment. And also it's uh, foreseen that this kind of glasses can be used also with uh, appropriate uh, actuators to uh, provide vision to blind uh, people. And also in the smart uh, shirts, uh, you have uh, for mainly for sport, you have uh, a shirt with a number of sensors distributed all uh, the, the body and you are collecting information and you can online monitor the behavior of this uh, uh, sportman and also of course you can send some uh, uh, information to the um, shirt and apply some medicine or some actions on the body. So there is a close interaction between the physical system, in that case the uh, sportman, and the uh, control. <coughs> so <coughs> we also have uh, bio-inspired systems. If you look at a flock uh, of birds, uh, you can realize that they are following some uh, um, goal and they interchange some uh, information in such a way that they are flying, uh, following a trajectory and uh, keeping a, a structure which allow them to uh, get better facilities. Uh, this has been exploited also when we uh, planify a surveillance uh, team. There are many uh, small devices that they are sensing and they are uh, providing information and they are uh, allowing us to get a global uh, information about the system and take some actions. These kind of systems are of course used for instance in uh, fire prevention in, uh, in the bush 
and also uh, <coughs> for detection of uh, mines on the earth or to detect any uh, error or any disaster in any wide uh, area. <coughs> We may consider also at a small level. Uh, if we consider a cellule, there are thousands of uh, genes in a cellule, like this one. And there are already some works trying to uh, implement um, artificial genes that can generate proteins with stabilizer in such a way that some part of the uh, uh, gene here some part is acting as a regulator and the other part is acting as a process. So you are integrating the idea of a process control at the level of uh, cellulose. <clears throat> well, we have mentioned many times about the application in space and I must say that this is an open uh, field. You uh, have a lot of uh, control problems and all this should be uh, use um, the new advances in distributed in communications and in uh, uh, computation facilities. So, but not all um, are benefits. There are also some risks because uh, the control should be able to cope with uh, failures, with uh, unexpected disturbances and uh, it, for that we will provide some redundancy. Um, really, one of the main disadvantages is that a control is mainly apparent when it fails. So, in this picture you can see that when you are looking at rain, nobody is thinking about the many control uh, devices and many control functions in the train, but if something fails, then we uh, realize that the control has uh, failed. <coughs> so, there are many new challenges. We must uh, deal with distributed systems, so we must reason about uh, space and time. We are dealing with uh, limitation in resources. We must deal with uh, uncertainty and communication between different uh, agents. We must uh, provide the security, fault tolerance and mm, provide the control uh, driven by uh, events and also sensors uh, driven by data. Well, what have we seen today? We have seen some extra control benefits, mainly because we are developing control systems with uh, networking, integration and dissemination and their uh, control structures are evolving from a single loop to um, network and embedded control systems and we have uh, seen that this allows for new control applications and opening the field for research and uh, development. <coughs> And finally, we saw that there are also some risks that we must take into account when we design a control system. As a summary of all this, we can say that uh, uh, computers, communications and control are involved in all these new applications. So CCC is the new area of uh, new technology in developing new uh, applications. So what is next? If we have a look at the modules, uh, we have finished uh, module 5, next one will be topics to study to go deeper uh, in the ideas of a control system. So, and that's uh, all uh, for today. Thank you.